worried so much about if that's the perfect height or the perfect pose because this is just me trying to get through the video. Um, I would prefer this if you were sculpting or something like that where you just have to sculpt the whole thing and then you do a little bit of that and then you can just get the effect that you really want. Um, now that I have this worked out and I have this done, uh, it's good to go into the pit. Establish the up and down movement, and then try to figure out first where that has to stop and where it needs to move. And what I find is that one or two frames before I need to take the pose down. Okay. And whatever's happening at frame 12 is actually going to happen at frame 24. And this is how it'll look. Uh, so now, as the foot's gone down on the ground, it's ready to receive the weight of the foot. So I'm just going to pull that down. Better there, let's see if we can find some ground here. Again, I'm just trying to get this up and down. So let's just assume that we're happy with those two frames and we can hold it. Uh, the next thing to do is to think about okay, there was a weight. Um, what's happening with the overlap? Okay, I can really just sculpt the overlap and see that. And here at the contact point,
I'll leave it like that for now and come back to it later. Again, I'll do it again. I'll start to work on it again. I'll do that. So the next thing you want to do is actually get in with the weight. The other thing to be able to do is the locomotion. And in the locomotion, I'm thinking about the swinging of it. What is it that's making that foot go forward? And where does that make the hand go forward? Okay, so a little bit of a trigger for that. Whatever's going on there, the foot is stuck on. Again. And uh, for the foot, you're not going to be able to do this one. Okay, so you got to pull it forward. A number of ways you can do this is make them go down. So I want to do something a little bit dynamic and kind of animated with it. So I'm going to lift the foot up to accentuate the lifting of the foot. So whenever I get it down to seven, this is the weight. seven is also going to have to be further on down like this. So I just work off of that and just do point thirty one. So this is point thirty one. I move that on down to point thirty one. The last thing here, really important to do, is to think about the weight shift. Because when there are the weighted on this foot, this is going to have to be over on here. So you can't do this foot on here. So this is going to have to be there. And then I'm going to shift and then turn that thing to get the two frames. probably good enough for now to tell us that that weighted on here. I want to start thinking about the lifting of the hip. So I just want to not think of the hip as just like a movement, but the other hip as like a Okay, so moving down to the feet. Now it's easier just to keep one foot directly on one side of the foot here. where the contact point is and I want to make it so it's real close and efficient. Um, there's going to be this heel on the ground and the toe up here, but about two frames later is when the foot will be touching the ground. So this is going to be the foot. Then right after that, I'm going to do the feet. I'll fix these intersections later. Uh, I'm a more of a fan of having a really straight road down here than a curved shape. Translation in Y and the X here because it's that heel to me like the last thing I want to do is go down to the ground. Okay, 
sure if it's got a lot of flex to it, and part of what happened here is that once you lift up the foot and it starts up, you lose a little bit of the force that the first time it felt it would feel if it was flat. So I'm going to make it feel flat, a real flat rest. Once the foot's in the head, it's better to give it a little bit of hanging room. So what I initially did by using the inner foot movement was I bend the down, lift, and that moment I felt room and the foot in the air was in the head. So I'm going to hold for here. thing now is to help this feel a little bit more flat. But before we get into that detail, let's also work on the arc of the foot or the swing foot as I call it. So I'm going to hold and the B is kind of the all the way through the leg and the heel and the shoe goes up and down. Basically, you can go ahead and say the position of that one foot in the foot back as I do this here. And as it swings forward here, sort of work through this. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can post that in the closed room. And then the rest of the little section is going to be minor, and I'm just going to be going over the bow pattern for now. that's being built up in the toe. And from here, we're going to go flat.
First thing we want to do is that sort of thing is is recognize the elements of the of the system. So if I ask about all the elements of the system, I start to answer that question. And by the first thing, I'm actually going to be in a relatively quick bucket of conflict with the example. <laughs> so we'll start with what's a whole thing and what does that mean? Thank you. 
too much of the disease that you might have because it starts to get a little bit too too crude. Let's go to I was in here quite a minute ago. Because the heat is not necessarily too great. We will I'm just gonna accentuate the movement that I've already been trying to do for it. And let's go a little bit further. We just get that footage going that we started.
Basically, it's down to how the camera and I often think of it as like the last time I got into the studio and used a strong microphone. And after that, everything just clicks. So it can be the remix kind of makes it special. And the mix is going to contain all the different. probably take about as much time to do as a good thing. But that's the basic idea of getting a lot of sound in. 